nice, is it? Beautiful. Beautiful. And the tips are bleached by the sun so that you get most of that light colour will come off. Uh, it's quite dry. And then if you can just pull this out sideways like that, then you're going to spin it. I won't have to comb this or anything. I'll just open it out by teasing it. And this is called teasing of just pulling it out sideways and that into a thin film. It's very soft wool. It's lovely. Beautiful. Especially bred for hand spinning the natural colouring of the fleece caused by the, the lanolin fleece. That won't come out probably. just ready to be spun now. The tops into smaller sections and because it is being uh, packed in a bundle I have to loosen it before I start to spin it. So I just loosen it gently, open it out so that it begins to slip. It's possible to turn it more easily into thread that way. is okay. And start treadling. This puts twist into the into the yarn. I'm joining what on now. Treadling has to be absolutely even, with different speeds, but it has to be even going over the top. That's being wound onto the bobbin automatically. There's a little brake system which slows the bobbin down relative to the drive pulley, and um, that means that the, the yarn winds on, pulls on just like that. This is fleece, which has been uh, soaked in cold water for half an hour and then dried. Very good fleece, rather coarse. And I'm just going to comb it. medium to long staple fleece. It's not particularly fine, but uh, a slightly coarser fleece shows up better.
Did that just straight from the sheet? No, this has been soaked in cold water for um, half an hour and then dried. The difficulty is getting it dry. This is a very, very close, um, not very fine, springy wool uh, with quite a lot of wave in it. It's got quite a lot of dirt in it. And um, it, um, it does make a rather coarse yarn but a wonderful for a heavy jersey or a hat or anything like that. It's, um, it's good for outdoor wear. Yeah, what are those combs for? These are carders. They have a large number of close set bent wires in them, which are set into um, in this case, leather, um, and uh, the handle is just to enable this to be supported flat and held flat. These are curved, but you can get flat ones. And um, this art of carding to make good Rolex takes really quite a long time to learn um, because there must be no uh, rough places inside the Rolex or it won't pull out evenly and you'll get a lump in the wool. During the course of carding, the, the fibres are, are combed out perfectly evenly and um, pulled out straight. And then, for the last time, they're put onto the carder and rolled up. There are different ways of rolling up, and this is the way I do it. I roll it across the face of the carder. And then I roll it down that carder, and there is the, the Rolag. Slightly unrolled there. It can be neatened up, and it should be even down the length, no thick bits and thin bits. Then they have to be oiled for the wool to slip when it's spun. They're oiled with a mixture of olive oil and water. Or any oil, indeed. So what would the people on Shetland have used? Um, probably seabird oil or seal, seal oil, whale oil, mixed into to an emulsion with water and uh, allowed to permeate the wool. Used to make woolen thread, true woolen thread. That's long ago. Too long ago. a very analytical 